Glory of God's filling this place right now. John the Baptist sent his disciples. And he said, go and ask Jesus, is he the one? Or should I look for another? And I love what the Lord said to him. He looked at those disciples at that moment. He could have opened up the heavens. He could have shown the glory. He could have shown them things that would have blown their minds. He could have put them under the power of the Holy Ghost. So they laid there for days. They would have known he was the Son of God. But I loved what he said. He said, go tell John the things that you see and hear. The blind see. The deaf hear. The lame walk. And the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Come here, pastor. Come here. Is that your wife? Please bring your wife. power of God is all over this sister right now she normally has no feelings but she she can feel our hands on her our hands on her legs and she's had no feeling in her legs can pastor tell them what's happened the power of God something is taking place right now and uh, the spirit of God is upon Delia Feeling your hands on my legs. Before? No, no. I could feel sensation before, but I couldn't feel actual feeling. This dear sister has nerve damage, and the Lord is restoring the sensation in her legs. Keep worshiping. Come on.
telling you right now, Jesus, we give you all the glory tonight. You know, our sister then, she just, she started going like this, I thought, Lord, is there any strength? She said, no, I'm doing this on purpose. I'm doing this on purpose. There's a recreative thing happening in her spine right now. Come on, give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, worship him, worship him. You gotta understand this lady. This lady has not walked in 20 years, 23 years. 23 years, no feeling in her legs. And she's starting to lift her legs on her own and make steps. She's a God. I tell you, that there's faith on this woman right now. There's faith all over her. The power of God. Come on, worship Jesus. lady as a testimony to the body of Christ let me tell you listen to me God is trying to teach the body of Christ about healing we all want instant snap your finger miracles but the Lord is trying to teach us in James 5 it talks about the prayer of Elijah praying for rain it links with praying for the sick we're seeing in this revival people just coming into the presence of God and as they do there's a restoration that begins to happen you see, on the first night, the Lord was connecting the nerves back in her spine to, to, to send communication to her legs. But I'm telling you right then, she was just walking on her own. I tell you, she's going to stand in the pulpit, totally healed by the... <laughs> What's happening with her right now? <laughs>
I call, I, I, my, my eyes, my eyes are seeing it. My eyes are seeing it, but my brain. Come on, somebody! I feel that same power filling this place right now. You've seen the video. Now we have the great pleasure of welcoming Sister Delia Knox and her husband, Levy Knox. Sister Delia, a mighty shout!
I tell you, the power of God's getting so strong in here tonight. Oh, Jesus. Bishop Levin, not stealing. Please come. Isn't it awesome what God has done in our sister's life? called my sister my revelation she's my twin have her have her come out here just a moment this is her twin sister right here look at this <laughs> i walked out a while ago whenever they came up they told me bishop and delia's back there and i walked out and they both were standing and i couldn't tell which one was delia and which one wasn't i just started hugging them <laughs> identical twins awesome because now i don't i don't need a revelation yeah i got the awakening yeah <laughs> You know, there are literally millions of viewers watching right now. And you know, we say all the time, you know, that you were paralyzed for 22 years. 22. But you know, that's easy for us to flip off the tongue. It's easy for me to proclaim 22 years. But I want you to tell us that there are people in wheelchairs right now that are watching. Did you tell them day to day for 22 years? I can tell you that for the first 10 years, I would rise every day saying, would today be the day? Would today be the day? And I'm getting emails all across the nation and beyond with people that have been hoping and they, they've given up hope. And I know what that's like. Because for the first 10 years, I would rise in the morning and I would say, would today be the day? As I would lift my legs off the bed and put them on the floor and then transfer onto my wheelchair, I would say, let's see if I feel today. And then 10 years, my 10th year anniversary of the loss of the use of my legs, I decided I would not mourn the loss anymore. I decided from here on I will worship, will use that which is productive in my life as a weapon of warfare. I will turn my weapon, my, my, my instruments of productivity into weapons of warfare. And I said, I will use my tongue to lift up your name everywhere I go. And I won't even give attention to what's going on. But I will worship you. Then for the next 10 years after that, I'm not going to tell you that every day I ignored it. Sometimes I would say, well, now it's 15. And then when it hit 20, I just knew. I just knew, almost like, I don't know if it's going to happen anymore. Then August 27th occurred, and the Lord showed me what hope deferred really means. You see, I had, I had put hope on the shelf. I deferred it for another time. Like when you put a payment off and you defer that payment. I deferred hope, which I believe made my body more and more because I started to think about, well, when we grow old and gray, how is my husband going to be carrying me? I started thinking about, you know, I'm going to end up in a home somewhere, a nursing home somewhere, because I would never want to burden anyone and I never had the privilege of birthing kids naturally, obviously. And so I, I thought, I, 
started to think like this. Well, it's just not going to happen. Something happened to me on August 27th when I came into that revival. It was when a baby came forth for prayer when two parents brought a baby. You see, before that I wanted to leave because I would stay away from scenes like that and I just wanted to roll out of there because I just didn't want to be disappointed anymore. I'm trying to be as real as I can. Go ahead, David. Go ahead. The, the power of God, I'm telling you right now. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you that every day I believed. I'm not going to tell you that. There were times that I put hope and deferred it for another time. August 27th, I came in there and I wanted to leave. But when the two parents, when a parent came, when parents came with their baby for prayer, I began to look at that baby in, in her arms. She had, the baby had a kidney disease. He had a baby, a kidney disease or something. And immediately, compassion came in my heart for that baby. And that day I was living, if you look even on my Facebook or Twitter account, Twitter account you will see it. It was, it was about First Peter where it's talking about it. Baby of a life conceived of God. Think about it. A life conceived by God. And I started to envision this couple, and I said, they don't come together to conceive a child that is deformed or defective. And I said, Lord, you've got to do something for that baby. And I began to cry right there in my chair. Father, you've got to do something for that baby. For that baby was conceived of incorruptible seed because of who you are, Lord. And as the parents went down and the baby went into the arms of one of the love greeters, the baby didn't cry or anything. And I just said, look, He's safe in the arms. He's safe in the arms. And then, before I knew it, they started to the Evangelist Nathan called my husband over. But it was in the midst of compassion that he was called over and he said, bring your wife over. Is that your wife? Bring her over. Because my heart became soft at that moment for a healing touch for that baby. Something happened and I could not, ex I can't explain it to you other than something happened within me to believe healing for that child. And then in that room when they called me over and Nathan began to pray. I was overwhelmed. And I just began to worship. And began to worship. And he said, let faith arise in this woman. Now you got to know, for the longest time when people would tell me, why are you in this chair? Is it that you don't have faith? I would tell them, what makes you think I'm sick? But that night, in the midst of compassion, my heart was softened to the point where I said, Lord, I allow you to do what you need to do with my life. Yeah. You are my hope. And in my mind, I just said, just don't disappoint me. And it was like all of a sudden, I brought hope back in alignment. I can't explain it to you other than I just felt the hands on my legs. 
something happened. It was like I had a Charlie horse going down and it was like bing. And then all of a sudden I could feel them, feel strengthened. And I didn't want to stop. <laughs> but then when I went down, and I don't know who was touching my legs. I think you were bending my knees or something. I don't know who it was. But when I could feel my knees being bent, it was like, get me back up again, please. Get me back up again. I got to do it again. See, because up until then, I thought I was moving with my hip. But then I could feel my feet. I said, Lord, I'm really walking. As, as, as Pastor Della, you're sharing about compassion. I believe that was the key that night when the Lord touched our hearts about this young baby. Because that was the moment that the heart became more tender and become more pliable and became more sensitive to the Lord to work this miracle, even in Della's life. And I believe that those that are watching and maybe in wheelchairs or all over the world, that when compassion goes out, virtue comes in. So virtue came in because compassion went out. What happened, that was a boomerang effect. So when, when out for that baby came around and touched my wife. If you just release compassion to others and love to others, and sometimes we have to get about, forget about ourselves. It says, God, there's someone there. I want to agree with them for their miracle, yes. for their breakthrough, for their release. Yes. And I believe God honors the faith for those that move in compassion yes. because that's where virtue comes in. Yes. And as a result of that, that night, yes. the power of God, I heard you say the surge, I felt the power of God, the surge. It was like, whew. I would never forget it in, in my life. I've never experienced anything like that, Apostle John. The power of God as you were praying, never a moment did you say, Delhi, get up. You, you prayed and said, God, let faith arise in this woman's heart. And that's when I heard, just get up. Get up. Get up. You Stop heard that in God. It in your mind. There was like this war in my mind. And it said, just get up. Just get up. I mean, there were other voices that were saying, don't make a fool of yourself. You know, hello. But there but, was a dominant but voice. But there was a dominant the voice The Holy that Spirit said, Get up. ignited faith. And when he said, let faith arise, I knew it's time to rise. You see, because I believe that every miracle, Apostle John and Evangelist Nathan, that every miracle is a result of the finished work of Christ. I, I believe that every miracle that happens is because Jesus has already finished it. Yeah! Yeah! And if we ever tap into the reality of the awareness of the finished work of Christ, is that now we're not trying to look to get something, we already have it, but we're waiting for the manifestation of it to come forth. Delhi was healed 2,000 years ago. But it was 22 and a half years later, August the 27, in this revival, God broke forth from the time, eternity into time. The kingdom of God came and invaded this time space world Jesus. and brought about a demonstration of the power of God that I believe Jesus. now is turning the attention back to the church, that God is arresting the attention of the world, Jesus. that He's still Lord, He's still King. Just, just tell them about vacation. Yes. <laughs> well, not vacation, but I'll tell you what. 
before we came from uh, uh, came to the revival, we were on our anniversary. On your anniversary. Yes. And so, and so you Nine came back. Years. You came back and you called me up and you said, "Hey, yeah. said I hear that something's going on." I said, "Yeah." I said, "Man, with power of God's moving." And right. He said, tell, "Tell the people what you told me on the phone." Well, I said, Apostle John, I said, the Spirit of God spoke to me on the 1st of August. I was in prayer and meditation and spending time in the presence of God. And, and the Lord spoke a prophetic word to me. And I shared this with you. And, it, and this was the word I shared with you. The Lord says that I'm sending a, f a fresh wind across the land. And he says, turn your face to the current and allow the Holy Spirit to catapult you to a higher dimension that you've never been before. And I believe that the Spirit of God is blowing across the land again. There's another wave coming. There's something happening in America, in our nations, and around the world. And that wind of God, and when I shared that with you, said, you said, would you come and share that in that opening greet the people? That Friday night. That Friday night. But what I heard in your voice, though, whenever you called me and you said, the Lord told me to put my face in the wind of revival, I heard a passion in your voice, and I've been knowing you for years. But I heard a passion in your voice. And I had no idea. I wasn't even thinking about Lady Delia at all. But I knew that if, if you came, you know, what would you say to pastors? What would you say to preachers that sometime would be hesitant or reluctant to travel to a revival or to go across town to, to a revival that's happening somewhere? What would you say to a person that's hesitant like that? Because God spoke to you and said, put your face in the wind. Uh, would you say that God's maybe saying that to pastors all around the world? Put your face in the wind of revival. I believe, I believe the Spirit of God speaks to our heart in times and seasons and moments called Kairos moments. <laughs> and there are pivotal times that God wants to shift some things. If we miss that moment, it may take another five years or ten years to come back around because a Kairos moment is the opportune season. It hits right then. And so I believe that the Spirit of God is speaking to pastors and leaders all over the world. Turn your face to the wind of the Spirit. And those that may feel reluctant or what's going to happen if I, my church or the members in the church or what's going to happen if I go to someone else's ministry. Well, the thing about it is this. I believe that if you work on another man's dream, God will send people to work on your dream. And I believe that if we can just get the mentality of the kingdom. See, the kingdom of God is bigger than the church. The church is the instrument by which God has chosen to extend the kingdom. But when you're kingdom minded, it transcends race, culture, geographical boundaries. We just want to see a move of God happen. And then churches and pastors all over can come together and say, this is God. And let God be glorified. Yes. So I want to encourage pastors all over that when the move of God in is that it's going to take a corporate body. And I believe that's the Father's heart. I believe the Father's heart, the Father's dream, God's dream is to have a corporate son, a many member body called Christ, a corporate son that will grow up into maturity and share his life and rule and reign with him presently, right now, on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. So I want to encourage pastors all over, Pastor John. I know, I've, we've known each other quite some time now, and Lady Brenda and the Church of His Presence and some of the, most, some of the powerful people that's a part of uh, uh, this ministry, what's going on. But I believe that, that integrity, to preserve integrity in relationships, God is calling pastors to be able to transcend and say, I want to connect to that which is real, authentic. People are looking for authenticity now. They're, they're looking for that is real. And I've watched your ministry. I've seen the things you've gone through, the persecution sometimes and the victories and so what, whatever. But you've always preserved integrity. And you're a man after God's own heart. You're an apostle. And God has entrusted and given you the mantle to steward this kind of move of God in this city. And so I couldn't help but to say, tell me what time it's going to be. We're going to be there because of relationship. Lady Dale, let me ask you this. I know everybody's probably wondering here and all over the world, whenever that happened last night, I, I remember so well that night 
<laughs> you know, I would say out of all the things that I've ever been through in my life, that was in the top five. <laughs> this night to see you like this mm. is in the top five events of my life. Jesus. It really is. Jesus. When, when that happened, whenever you could feel his hand on your legs and you could feel your knees, what, what, what was it? Was it like it was just a dream? What, what, what did you feel? You know, for the first, for the first few weeks, I thought I was dreaming. I was afraid, I'm going to be honest, I was afraid to go to sleep. I was afraid to wake up. Yeah. Um, I had to go through the process, yeah. through a whole process. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I didn't want to go to bed that night, but yet I was so exhausted. And then I woke up <laughs> and my body was hurting. <laughs> it was hurting. It was hurting. And it was a great thing. It was a great thing. When you woke up the next morning, what did you think? What did you, what, what did you, was, did it seem like a dream last night? It seemed, it like, seemed a like a dream. It yeah. seemed like a dream. And I was, I, I, I didn't know what to do with my life anymore. I, I woke up and I was like, do I walk the dog? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do. Um, you know, for 22 and a half years, you lived your life one way. And now, you know, you just, it, you're overwhelmed with what just happened. And I had to, I had to just really process everything that morning and that day, that whole day. Um, it was quite overwhelming. For a couple you, of weeks, you, it was quite overwhelming. You don't mind? Do you mind me telling about us coming over to your church that couple of oh, days? Oh, the Tuesday. Yeah. Well, do, do yeah. You mind, do you mind me oh, telling? Oh no, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. We went over to the church on that Tuesday, uh, Nathan and I, to meet them because we just wanted to shore up her faith, you know, and love on her and just just shore up her faith. And we went over there, and, and she wouldn't even look at the video from that Friday night. Right. She was afraid to look at the video. Mm. And uh, I remember I, I looked at her, and I told her, I said, Lady Delia, I said, me and Nathan's not going to leave here till you watch that video. That's right. He made That's me right. watch the video. I That's said, right. you're going to watch that video, or we ain't leaving. And whenever you, I'll never forget your face as long as I live, whenever you, we put that on in pastor's office, and you started watching yourself, your face, mm. oh my God, is like the face of an angel. Mm. Hope, right. faith, life. Oh man. <laughs> I knew it really happened. Yeah. You see, why, why was you afraid to watch it though? What, what, what was going on in your mind? I thought it was somebody else. I thought it was, you know, when you're under the anointing, something great happens and then you go home and it doesn't happen again. You're like. Did you feel like maybe the wheelchair didn't want to let you go? Yeah. And, and it was like, this is just, I, I can't watch this because this wheelchair won't let me go. And this, I, I can't continue this. And this is, that was great. And this is a good start, but I don't know if I can finish this. Is that right. sort of like you was going through? It, it, it was challenging. When people would ask you the question, though, like, well, if God healed you, how come you just didn't jump out of the wheelchair oh that night and start walking and running? Oh. What would you say about that? Good. You know, I have to say that I, be, I became kind of like, um, how do I, ooh, um, for lack of a better term, I became a little angry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> angry because I knew what I had felt. And I... It was, I had to learn what a progressive healing was about. Mm. That was the toughest thing. Going out of the house and seeing people who knew and they still see you in the chair because you're, you're having to learn how to walk again. I had to go through that process. And the Lord showed me the man in the, on the way to the pool of Salawan. There you go. You know, people must have looked at him with that gook in his eyes. And I just felt, and I don't know if it was in my mind or in the people's mind, but I thought, you know, the city's looking at you. Everybody knows what happened at the convention center in the city. They're looking at you still in this chair. And so I had to process all of that. And that was the toughest thing to go in somewhere and Someone says, I heard what happened, and I'm just looking at them, and I'm just really at that moment not wanting to talk about it because I'm still going through the process, the but you knew, But you knew, though, that but you had feelings. Tuesday. You knew you had feelings, though, oh, right? Oh, I knew I had feelings. And you, because your muscles were atrophied, you oh, just couldn't walk yet. I, could, I, had to, 
I had to learn how to walk again. Yeah. And, it, it, and, and, and that's what happened. And you know, if there's anything I want somebody, anybody out there to know is that there is such thing as progressive healing. Absolutely. As a progressive healing. Um, I experienced it. And I, I, you know, I had to build that muscle up again. I have to build that muscle up again and, and, you know, and work on, uh, on my legs and, and work on them. And it, it's, a, it's an awesome thing to wake up in the morning and feel the pain. And, and you know, it, it's, it, it's, hey, it's you know, thing. it's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> and, you know, but there are things I have to do, you know, and it's, it's great. Um, just to know that it, it is a progressive healing. But you know that night at the, at the convention center, I don't know if you remember this or not, but I told you, I said, now, Lady Delia, I said, now, Nathan and I will come over any time of the night, day or night. You call us. We'll come over. I said, because the devil's going to fight you. And he's going to tell you this is not real. Nothing happened. And I said, we're going to come over there and we're going to reinforce your faith. But I said, you're going to be in that wheelchair for a little while. But I said, the day will come that you'll stand by yourself. And I said, the day will come that you will walk by yourself. You will see it. You will see it happen. But it, didn't, it never bothered me in the least that you left out of that meeting that night in the wheelchair because I understood that your muscles were atrophied and you're going to have to get those muscles built back up. So that never bothered me. And to those that's watching by God television, let me tell you, if Jesus, if Jesus healed a blind man and he said, How do you, what's going on? What do you see? He said, well... I see men like trees walking. The Lord said, let's do this again. If the Lord did it twice, if it was a progressive healing in him, it can be a progressive healing in him. It can be a progressive healing in you, wherever you are in yes. the world. God has started a good work. Don't let the devil yes. steal it from you.